Welcome to the Leader Smith Podcast. It is Twitter Tuesday. Stay tuned. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so Twitter Tuesday is a little different than most shows on Twitter Tuesday. I just go out to Twitter, look up hashtag leadership, see what's out there. Most of it is a bunch of useless nonsense or somebody trying to use the hashtag leadership to sell something or encourage you to read an article or something along those lines. But every once in a while, you'll find some gems and I sort out those gems and we talk about them on Tuesday. So the first one is from Daryl Smith at D Smitty D9199 and he has a quote by uh, General George Patton and says this quote do everything you ask of those you lead and that's important if you add, if you do what you ask of those you lead you won't be perceived as some kind of leadership hypocrite you won't be perceived as being too high and mighty and too good to do what you tell us to do that's important because it's going to be a big morale booster if you're willing to get down and do it too i remember when i was in high school i ran track i ran hurdles specifically and uh, i for whatever reason i just kept catching the, this was my junior year, I guess. Um, I've been running for a year uh, since my sophomore year, and I I just got kind of caught in a a bad habit where my trail leg would catch the hurdle. The first leg is uh, your your lead leg. My lead leg went over, but my trail leg just kept like dipping down. Um, The toe would dip down and it would catch the hurdle. And I I was very frustrated. I was like, coach, I, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. He said, look, and then he ran it like he ran the hurdles and he was wearing some like seventies looking like this was like the nineties. So he's wearing this like seventies polyester track suit. And it was just like, I know he, he was probably 40 something, but to me, he seemed ancient. You know, when you're 17, you don't have that perspective and he just seemed ancient. And so he ran it and I had the greatest respect for him from that point forward because he could do what he was asking me to do. So that's what I'm encouraging you to think about here. Do everything you ask of those you lead. Okay, next, this is from Mario Morera, and it is at A-G-I-L-E-M-A-R-I-O. Um, and he talks about attributes of a great boss. What do you think? Hashtag leadership. And this was, he's um, relating Vala Asher, V-A-L-A-A-F-S-H-A-R's, Uh, post about the bosses we remember and there's nine attributes that he lists one they provided us a safe space to grow yes that is huge for leadership number two they opened career doors okay three they defended us when we needed it number four they recognized and rewarded us number five they developed us as leaders number six they inspired us to stretch higher number seven led by example number eight told us our work mattered number nine they forgave us when we made mistakes now that is a huge list that i mean there's every all kinds of good things about leadership are included in there now what's interesting is if you listen to that list you can just rewind and listen to this list you'll hear very little about management because leadership is not the same as management it's not like well they got more efficiency out of us and they they really impressed uh the the bosses with their extraordinary powerpoint and their plan to make it it wasn't that it was about caring for human beings and that's where you see leadership okay very good mario and vala this is for Simmerjeet Singh, S-I-M, or at S-I-M-E-R-J-E-E-T-S-I-N-G-H. And he says this, quote, true leaders don't create followers. They create more leaders, unquote. And that's a quote by Ziad Abedinur. I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering that name, but that's exactly right. Your goal is not to create other followers so that you have a pyramid. Your goal is to create other leaders. And as they rise, you rise. That's just a natural process. Um, but it's you're trying to create people with the capability to lead, not trying to create more followers. Okay, next one. This is Leadership Memes, at Leadership Memes, and this is a quote by John Wooden. Sounds just like the patent one earlier. Quote, the most powerful leadership tool you have is your own personal example, unquote. That's by John Wooden, one of the most winningest coaches in the NCAA. 
Um, and that personal example cannot be overstated. It is so important that you lead by example. Okay, uh, next one is uh, a quote by David Kessler at M U K U N D A N A P is who posted this. It's a quote by David Kessler. It says this, quote, our worst moments can be the seeds of our best moments. They have an amazing power to transform us. And that's true. If you look at the times where you really grew or where you really um, gained traction as a leader, maybe it was uh, something bad happened to your your employees, your the people that report to you, and you stood up for them, and you lost, but you stood up for them, and because you stood up for them, that's why they now see you as a leader. Our worst times can be our best times. They have amazing power to transform us, and I think that's absolutely right. Okay, next, this is by Bruce Van Horn, at Bruce VH. He quotes Jim Rohn who says this, quote, managers help people to see themselves as they are. Leaders help people to see themselves better than they are. I think that's very true. I think if you say, um, if you think of your average manager, he'll walk into a room, see people and think how he can use them, right? If you take a good leader, one who's trying to help you grow, right? He's going to look at those same people and he's going to look at those people and see the room within them that has space to grow so that they can become the leaders that they ought to be. That's what he's going to see. Not just how to use them now in the short term, but what their potential is to grow in the long term. That's what he should be looking at. Okay, great quote. Okay, this is Nick Crystalis, this is at Leading Guru, and he says, quote, for leadership, hashtag leadership, trust is a must. Without it, all we have left is fear. So instead of choosing leaders who are confident, narcissistic, and charismatic, we should choose leaders for their competence, humility, and integrity. Now, that was just what he said in his own writing. Now, with that, he also added a meme of a quote by David Horsager that says this, you can have a compelling vision rock solid strategy, excellent communication skills, innovative insight, and a skilled team. But if people don't trust you, you will never get the results that you want. And I think that's, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, somehow we rely on, well, that guy looks confident and he looks charismatic. Well, that's not the same thing as trust. You have to build trust and trust is built by showing me that you care. Okay. The next one is Steve Keating at Lead Today. He says, never mistake silence for agreement, hashtag leadership. And he has this really interesting uh, meme that I, it's not attributed to anyone. So I don't know if it's his or it's somebody else's, um, but it's a great quote. He says, sometimes not saying anything is the best answer. You see, silence can never be misquoted. Now, that's true on so many levels. One, it's true. It can't be misquoted. But two, silence is sometimes, you know, even a fool, the Proverbs say, is thought uh, wise if he, if he remains silent. And then on a third level, silence can speak volumes. I went to a meeting once where, um, now, I'm known to have opinions and to run my mouth and to um, give exactly what I see as, you know, my answer. So when I went to an uh, to a meeting after something very bad had happened to one of our employees, uh, I, I was very angry and I sat there the whole time and I bit my tongue and I didn't say anything, but that spoke volumes. In fact, it got back to me later. Somebody told me that uh, they were alarmed because um, they, you know, so that somebody got back to them that Dr. Gertis didn't say anything the entire time. And it was alarming that my silence spoke volumes. And sometimes silence speaks volume. So at any rate, um, yeah. So yeah, just I, I think that there's uh, something very right about that meme. And then let's go back to his original thing. Never mistake silence for agreement. Never, never, never mistake silence for agreement. It's not necessarily so. Silence just means that they haven't spoken. It doesn't mean that they're on the same page with you. And you're on thin ice until you find out whether you have that agreement or not. Okay, the next one is by Shriners, like the guys with the hats that run the Shriners Hospital for Children. Um, it's just by the Shriners organization. It's a quote by Albert Einstein. It says, try not to become a person of success, but rather try to become a person of value. That's right. Don't worry about you becoming successful. If you become valuable, the success will take care of itself. 
And that's a great quote. I mean, it's just, if you think in terms of adding value to other people, you just can't go wrong. It, it will naturally have the effect that you're looking for. Okay, next, this is by M. Flick, M. Fl uh, at M. Flick 10. And he says, these changes at Siemens will also be associated with a different leadership style, one that focuses on outcomes rather than on time spent at the office. And this isn't a quote. This is just uh, an article that I want to highlight. Siemens, the German manufacturer Siemens, is to let staff work from anywhere permanently. This is because of the quarantine. Uh, Siemens has decided to let its employees work where, where, from wherever when they want for two or three days a week. And the latest example of whatever the article is saying, it just cuts off at that point. But I think he's right in that this is going to be associated with a different leadership style. And although it's not a quote, think about how you're going to have to adjust your leadership. And this, I think, is a very positive thing, how you have to adjust your leadership when you can't micromanage, when you have to rely on people and uh, simply track outcomes rather than look over their shoulder in the meantime. I think there's a big change in business coming. Okay, next one. This one is from uh, Positively Teacher Co. at T Positive TC. And they say this, it's definitely worth remem remembering. Hashtag leadership, hashtag spread kindness. And the quote is this Being told that you're appreciated is one of the simplest and most uplifting things you can hear. And okay, so this comes from teachers. Being told that you're appreciated is one of the simplest and most uplifting things you can hear. And I think it's dead right. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad teachers are thinking this way. But as a leader, you talking, saying something kind or uplifting to your followers is the most uplifting thing they can hear, but it's magnified by your position. Okay. So when you go out of your way to say something uh, appreciative, uh, uplifting, uh, kind, it, it just has such a powerful effect because of who it came from. So keep that in mind. Okay, next, this one is from um, Randy Hall at 4th Gear, at 4-T-H-G-E-A-R. And it, this, was, this one was really interesting um, for a couple of reasons. So I'm going to read the uh, quote first, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So, quote, as leaders, how we think about the ability of others to change makes all the difference in how successful we are at helping them change. That's the quote um, next to it with the hashtag leadership and leadership gym and leadership training. So I thought, yeah, you know, that that's that's right. It's there's a there's a Pygmalion effect uh, here. There is if you think that they're going to change, odds are that they're going to have an easier time changing. If you think that nah, they're just terrible people, they'll never change. They will never change. I, I think that there's something very accurate about this. But more importantly, this was a uh, link to a podcast. This was episode four, How Leaders Think About Behavior Change. So I listened to the podcast. It was a pretty good podcast. This guy knows what he's talking about. And then um, I think he has like eight episodes at this point. And I went and listened, to, I think, to all eight um, because I went all out of order just based on interest, just saying, like, well, well, let's see what this one's about. Well, let's see what that one's about. And uh, it, it was good stuff. I was very impressed. Um, whatever Randy Hall is doing at the Leadership Gym podcast, if you're interested in another podcast about leadership, check out the Leadership Gym, G-Y-M. So the next one is by Chris Garcia 3 at Chris Garcia 3 He says, this is a powerful vantage point, hashtag leadership. And the quote is by Doris Kearns Godwin. She's the one that wrote the uh, Team of Rivals book about Abraham Lincoln. And it says this, quote, good leadership requires you to surround yourself with people of diverse perspectives who can disagree with you without fear of retaliation, unquote. Now, I think that's very important for a number of reasons. Very often, leaders get into this rut where they want to hear um, kind of an echo chamber of how brilliant they are. Um, so they hire people that are like them, that think like them, that talk like them and are impressed by them. What they really need, however, is somebody who doesn't think like them to see it differently, to be able to see your blind spots, to be able to see what uh, could be improved. And if they get people of diverse perspective who disagree with them, even if they get that far, very often they minimize or discount. And so it takes a 
big leader to not minimize or discount that, but to listen to it and then incorporate their ideas and not retaliate. So I think this is a really good quote for that reason. So thank you for that contribution on Twitter. The next one is David Peterson. This is at DLP Speaks. And he says this, quote, improving and working on yourself makes you a better leader what you need to work on. That's what he says in his own like introduction to it. And then there's a quote by Warren Bennis. That's a meme where he says, becoming a leader is synonymous with becoming yourself. It's precisely that simple. And it's also that difficult. And I think Bennis is brilliant. Now, Bennis is brilliant for a number of reasons, but I think that quote particularly is brilliant because leadership is really about others, but it's about working on yourself in order to be about others. I don't know if that makes sense. It's it's just leadership is something that it, it's just self-improvement kind of process. It has to be about others. It can't be like, let me self-improve for me. No, it's got to be because you care about others. But it is ultimately, at the end of the day, working on yourself in order to effectively be about others. Okay, this is the last one. This is by Scott Hondo dash Aussie Mark at S-A dash H-O-N-D-O-W. And he says that world-class organizations are defined by their leaders, but he also posts a meme here. And the meme says this, quote, you can spot a world-class organization a mile away. Its people are happy and attentive. Their surroundings are well-kept and everyone cares about what they're doing. At its head, you'll normally find a humble and gracious leader. It almost never fails to be the case. Now, there's no attribution, so I guess that's from him, uh, but I think he's very much on to something. Peter Drucker talked about how um, the best run organizations that he's seen were boring. And so that's not the same thing as what he's saying here, but he's got the right idea. If there's a crisis du jour, if there's, you know, today's crisis and then tomorrow's crisis is different and the next day's crisis is something else yet, then that's a poorly run organization. If everyone's running around like their hair's on fire, that's a poorly run organization. A good organization, says John Cotter, is an organization where everyone is work, working on mission and purpose. And they're not just, they don't have a sense of uh, they have to run, but they have an urgency. It's a true urgency that keeps them on task. It's not a, ah, oh, we got to do this crisis. Ah, if the, you have that kind of urgency, something went wrong. OK, and sometimes we get tricked into it. So I think he's very, very right by talking about how a world class organization, they're happy, they're attentive, things are taken care of. And at the top, you'll normally find a humble and gracious leader. All right. Well, folks, thank you for your time today. That's all that we have for Twitter Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed this Twitter Tuesday and you'll come back next Tuesday.